Okay, so beautiful insight into the beautiful insight. It's not a beautiful insight. That's the wrong word. Great insight. Great. Yeah. Great insight into the beautiful world of aquascaping here at Aqua Depot. <laughs> Hi everyone, George here, and it's really cool because I'm at my good friend Ryan's place, Aqua Depot. I've not been here probably over a year now, is it? That's September, I think. Yeah, almost a year, and the place has changed a lot. We've got some beautiful new aquascapes. I'll take you through each one. We'll talk about each one in more detail. Pay attention because I'm going to ask you right at the end, which is your favourite and why? So I really hope you enjoyed the film, guys. Give us a thumbs up if you do. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And like I said, drop me a comment below which of the scapes is your favourite. And more importantly, why is it your favourite? Okay, let's start off with the biggest aquascape here at Aqua Depot right now. This beautiful nature aquarium, measuring about 10 feet long or three meters by three feet front to back or just under a meter by two feet tall or 60 centimeters. Overall volume I think is about 1600 liters or about 400 US gallons. Beautiful panorama style aquascape because of the long kind of shallow effect of the aquarium. Stocked with Congo tetras, we've got some sort of green uh, tiger barbs in there and as you can see it's a beautiful aquascape, driftwood dominated, regular kind of driftwood, some smaller pieces of Frodo stone, some beautiful epiphytes, we've got some lovely Anubius nana which is absolutely algae free which is really great to see, some trident fern, we've got some rotala green, some Ludwigula glandiosa by the look of it, Crinum calamistratum, Bulbitis, some beautiful Nymphia lily there. And then again, we've got some Hygrophila, looks like uh, Coriumbosa on the right. Some Hygrophila pinnatifida there as well. And I think the real striking thing for me about this aquascape is the use of open space. Almost three kind of separate islands. Actually reminds me a little bit of Floristas submersus, like a smaller version. Definitely use this kind of concept of the islands and the open space. Really well maintained, the glass is really clean. I can't see any dirt or anything on the gravel. I'm guessing they maintained it recently. Fish choice is interesting. Personally, I would go for perhaps something bigger, uh, more slender, maybe Disoni barbs. Let me know in the comments what kind of fish you'd like to see in here. But, you know, they're thriving, obviously. They're loving this huge space that they've got. And a great example, of what you can achieve in a large nature aquarium. And when you come into the store, you come up the stairs, and this is you know, one of the first things you'll see. It's right at the end of the store, but because it's so big, it looks absolutely fantastic. So Ryan has just informed me that they did indeed use Florestas Submersus, that's the huge 160,000 litre aquarium in Lisbon. Check out the video I did uh, recently. It's had over half a million views, so give it another view if you like. But they did use this as inspiration. I think they actually kind of uh, had it attached to the cabinet and literally kind of copied it. And this is a really great lesson for you guys. You know, even professional aquascapers, experienced aquascapers will use inspiration and copy other, other folks' aquascapes. There's nothing wrong with this. It's all about creating something that you enjoy at the end of the day. Okay, here we go, Aquascaper 600, one of my favorite tanks of all time because of their great dimensions, 60 centimeters or two feet long by 50 centimeters or 20 inches by 14 inches tall or 36 centimeters. This gives us a really nice footprint, loads of real estate to be able to aquascape. And we've got a classic Iwagumi here, again using Frodo stone, 
my Grantham and Monte Carlo carpet here, getting quite thick. Uh, some Blixia japonica, which is actually quite a rare plant to find in the UK. It's nice to see it here. And actually my favourite fish of all time, the good old Neon Tetra. Classic, simple, beautiful, I love it. Not forgetting the Twin Star lighting as well, I just noticed. So that's the Twin Star SA, I believe, which means it's adjustable and the S is the higher power version than the E. Okay, moving on to this D&D &D aquarium. This measures 150 centimetres by 60 by 60 or five foot by two foot by two foot. This gives us around 500 litres or 125 US gallons. It's actually sumped. You don't really often see freshwater aquascapes getting sumped, but it does work. You just might go through a little bit more CO2 if you're getting some off-gassing. Classic island composition, convex layout and it's gone through it's recently just been trimmed right back so the stems aren't looking their best but really nice hardscape we've got a mixture of frodo stone by the look of it and some siriu beautiful use of wood some lovely mosses on there looks like regular java moss uh, just a classic nature aquarium really like this lit with the loopy led led these are now uh, defunct so i don't believe they're in operation anymore uh, but just as um Fun fact for you, I think this unit would cost around about three or four thousand pounds. So maybe it's no wonder they went bankrupt. <laughs> Please don't sue me. Okay, this is really cool. We've got like an island here with one, two, three, four, five scapes on there. I'll go through each one and then we'll talk about it in more detail. Uh, but just really cool. The customer can like walk around, have a look at each scape. And I really like the idea of having scapes quite close together. It makes maintenance much easier if they want to do like batch maintenance. Awesome. Got another Aquascape of 600 here, lit with the Twin Star 600 SA again. Pressurized CO2, I think pretty much all of the tanks have got pressurized CO2 glassware. And very interestingly, I've just been chatting with Ryan, they only dose, liquid fertilizer wise, they only dose the ADA, Brighty K and iron. So they're relying on the nutrient content of the substrate system, which is the Prodibio soil and as this gets exhausted then they'll be dosing uh, the, the bigger range of the ADA liquid fertilizers like the nitrogen and the mineral but the results speak for themselves healthy plant growth not much algae and just shows you guys that there's different ways to feed your plants so let's talk about the scape in more detail very stem heavy again using the frodo stone real heavy use of frodo stone throughout the aquascapes here at aquadepo Lovely open foreground area, contrasting with the full-on stem plant, dense planting in the back. So we've got Rotala Green, I think. We've got some Hydrocotyl Tripartita, some Rotala Hra. It's like Weeping Moss. Some Crips there, it's a bit of Eucalypalandra and some Anubias. So really nice scape, a little bit different. There is some driftwood there, I've just noticed. I just, my eyes were drawn to the beautiful Frodo stone. But yeah, lovely, lovely nature aquarium. Black Neon Tetras. Uh, my only complaint is the dirty glassware. I'll have a chat with Ryan about that later.
Okay, actually, this is one of the most exciting escapes for me personally. Uh, ADA, or it's not an ADA, I do apologise, it's Dua, D O O A Terra 30. Still have one at home in its box. Obviously, going to be setting it up for the new gallery area. And this has given me real inspiration, actually. Absolutely love it. Real simple layout, just some nice driftwood, some Anubius, different mosses, moss wall at the back, a few cherry barbs in the bottom there, some crypts. Super simple, constantly getting misted to maintain moisture. And the great thing about this is you get, you get absolutely everything you need as part of the kit. So I just think it makes it really simple for folk. You know, you're not gonna have much maintenance. It's only a small bit of water in the bottom there. And then just trimming the plants above. Really beautiful and what a lovely addition to any living space. I really love this above and below water thing that's going on. Here we have a beautiful Aquascaper 900, real stem heavy there in the background, using a mixture of Rotalas, some beautiful red Rotala, I'm not sure what the species is, and it looks like Rotala green. And yeah, just a, another classic example of a beautiful nature aquarium. Quite different, I really love the way they've organized the stones to create this real sense of depth. And I have to apologize for not being in front of the camera for this one. For some reason, I didn't film myself. Here we have another beautiful Aquascaper 900. Again, very heavy use of stems in the background, open sand foreground, bit of a theme going on here at Aquadepo. Pridivio soil in the background. Liquid fertilizers, like I said, Bright EK and Iron from ADA. Fish-wise, we've got the Glowlight Tetras, really beautiful addition to this Aquascape. Looks like we've got the Aquascaper glass pipework set up there. And the real standout plant for me is this Rotala macrandra. Uh, quite a tricky plant to grow, but obviously growing really well in this setup. Uh, we've got some, looks like regular kind of Java moss there, some Rickia uh, submersed. Uh, looks like some form of Rotala that's just been trimmed back, so not looking at its absolute best, but no doubt will grow back and look stunning. So again, another beautiful nature aquarium, really impressed. Uh, lighting wise we've got the loopy leds, don't need, need to talk about that too much. And the back, it's worth talking about the backgrounds actually, they've all got frosted film backgrounds, so this is really great. So this allows for, if you want to use any backlighting etc, it just diffuses the background, it gives us uh, just a, a nicer uh, visual effect I would say. We're using Sirio stone here or mini landscape rock, one of the few that haven't got Frodo stone in there. Classic kind of Iwagumi, but using heavy use of stem plants, which is quite unique. I uh, really like it. Here we have a beautiful Aquascaper 1200, classic nature aquarium. Suffering a little bit with algae issues, the CA2 did fail and it was actually an equipment failure, so no fault of Aquadepo. Uh, running the Aquascaper glass pipework set that again, loopy lead lighting, classic rheophyte plants here, or epiphyte plants, trident fern, anubius, uh, my favourite crypts, a few stem plants, Frodo stone, open sand foreground, and again, Pridivio uh, soil in the back. I do believe they had a load of stem plants in the background, but because of this algae outbreak, I think Ryan decided to remove them all. I'm sure it will turn to its former glory in a few weeks time once the algae is recovered and maybe Ryan's going to replant some stem plants in the background. Harlequin resboras, we've got a, a ram there, black neon tetras, a bit of a mix of fish, you can just spot an ember tetra there as well. Uh, two filters, so we've got some uh, stainless steel pipes here and the glass pipes on the left. So another beautiful aquascape here at Aquadepo, really impressed, it's really actually for me, it's really great to come back after a chunk of time and see how things evolved in the store. Ryan's got some amazing plans for the future, so definitely one to look out for. And if you are visiting London anytime, do pop in, check out the opening hours to make sure they are open. It is quite tricky to find. Ryan won't mind me telling you that. It's kind of at the bottom of an industrial estate, so don't think you're lost. It is here, um, but really inspirational place. And if you're into aquascaping, then definite must see, especially if you're in the London area. Okay, so there you go guys, an insight into the beautiful aquascapes here at Aquadepo. A real treat for me to film these for you. Let me know in the comments which is your favourite and it's really great to know why you think it's your favourite so I can get a kind of indication of your taste and who knows, maybe I might use this to influence my own aquascapes in my own gallery at home. 
So another thanks to Ryan for inviting me. Do check out the place if you're in the area. Get inspired. And what can I say? Uh, keep on scaping. That's what I normally say, isn't it? You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio. And return to its former glory. Glock. And return to its former... <laughs> We're getting tired. I always do this on the last tank. On the last thing, I always like mess my words up because I'm getting excited to finish. <laughs> uh, I can't remember where I was. What was I talking about? Stem plants in the back? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, another beautiful nature aquarium, Aquascape here at Aqua Depot. What can I say? Oh, where's the last tank? Better beat those bits out. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah.